Good morning, brothers and sisters. My name is Brother McKinney. I bring you the love of the stake presidency. I know that they know love and think about each and every one of you. I'm very happy and feel very privileged to have the opportunity to speak to you today. My talk today is titled, Become a Full Tithe Pair. We first see tithing mentioned in the Old Testament after Abram had rescued Lot and his family from Sodom. Genesis chapter 14, verses 18 through 20. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. It's a little clearer in the Book of Mormon. Let's turn to Alma, chapter 13, verse 15. And it was the same Melchizedek to whom Abraham paid tithes. Yea, even our father Abraham paid tithes of one-tenth part of all he possessed. So we go back to the Old Testament, look in Leviticus chapter 27, verses 30 and 32 through 34. And all the tithes of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. And concerning the tithes of the herds of the flocks, even of whatsoever passeth under the rod, the tenth shall be holy unto the Lord. These are the commandments which the Lord commanded Moses for the children of Israel in Mount Sinai. And in Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 22, we read, Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed, that the, forth, that the field bring forth year by year. So let's uh, turn to a little more modern scripture. We'll go to the Doctrine and Covenants, section 119, verse 4. The Lord affirmed that law in modern he affirmed that law in modern revelation, commanding his people to pay one tenth of all their interest annually, and declaring that this shall be a standing law unto them forever. So now that we've established that tithing is a commandment from the Lord in ancient and modern times, let's look at what blessings we will receive from obeying this celestial law. Blessings from pain tithing. Well, let's go back to the Doctrine and Covenants. Section 64, verse 23. Behold, now it is called today unto the coming of the Son of Man, and verily it is a day of sacrifice and a day for the tithing of my people. For he that is tithed shall not be burned at his coming. No prophet of the Lord in modern times has preached the law of tithing more fervently than President Heber J. Grant. As an apostle and later as president of the church, he frequently called upon the saints to pay an honest tithe and made firm promises to those who would do so. I quote, I bear witness and I know that the witness I bear is true, that the men and women who have been absolutely honest with God who have paid their tithing, God has given them wisdom, whereby they have been able to utilize the remaining nine tenths, and it has been of greater value to them, and they have accomplished more with it than they would if they had not been honest with the Lord. And President Grant goes on, I appeal to the Latter-day Saints to be honest with the Lord, and I promise them that peace prosperity, and financial success will attend those who are honest with our Heavenly Father. When we set our hearts upon the things of this world and fail to be strictly honest with the Lord, we do not grow in the light and power and strength of the gospel as we otherwise would do. During the Great Depression, President Grant continued to remind the saints that the payment of tithing would open the windows of heaven for blessings needed by the faithful. In that stressful period, some of our bishops have observed that members who paid their tithing were able to support their families more effectively than those who did not. 
The tithe payers tended to keep their employment, enjoy good health, and be free from the most devastating effects of the economic and spiritual depression. The payment of tithing also brings the individual tithe payer unique spiritual blessings. Tithing, tithe paying is evident that we accept the law of sacrifice. It also prepares us for the law of consecration and the other higher laws of the celestial kingdom. Lectures on faith prepared by the early leaders of the restored church part the curtain on that subject when they say, let us here observe that a religion that does not require the sacrifice of all things never has power sufficient to produce the faith necessary unto life and salvation. For from the first existence of man, the faith necessary unto the enjoyment of life and salvation never could be obtained without the sacrifice of all earthly things. The Savior affirmed that teaching when the Pharisees asked him whether it was lawful to pay taxes. The Lord replied with this command, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. In the Lord's commandments to people of this day, tithing is one-tenth of all their interest annually, which is understood to mean income. The first, president has, first presidency has said, no one is justified in making any other statement than this. As with members of many other faiths, Latter-day Saints believe that the payment of tithing shows gratitude to God and brings both spiritual and temporal blessings. There are accounts of good Christian businessmen who promised to give the Lord a share of their profits and then attributed their business success to the fact that the Lord was their partner. The payment of tithing is a test of priorities. The Savior taught that reality, taught that reality when he gave this parable. Luke chapter 12, 16 through 21. The ground of a certain rich man brought forth, brought forth plentiful. And he thought to himself saying, what shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said this, this is what I'll do. I'll pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much good laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose, whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasures for himself and is not rich towards God. A more modern illustration of that same principle is suggested in a story of two men standing before the casket of a wealthy friend. One asked, how much property did he leave? Replied the other, he left all of it. President Lorenzo Snow taught that the law of tithing is one of the most important ever revealed to man. God's purpose in giving us commandments is to bless us. He wants to give us eternal life, the greatest of all his gifts, to receive the gift of living with him forever in families in the celestial kingdom. We must be able to live the laws of that kingdom. He has given us commandments in this life to help us develop that capacity. The law of tithing is one of those preparatory commandments. The law is that we give the Lord one-tenth of all our income. It is simple enough that even a child can understand it. I have seen children hand a tithe an envelope that contains one-tenth of the coins they earned. One of the blessings that comes from paying a full tithing is developing faith to live an even higher law. To live, thus, to live in the celestial kingdom, we must live the law of consecration. There we must be able to feel that all we are and all we have belong to God. There are at least three ways of, of that paying, tithe, paying a full tithe in this life prepares us to feel 
what we need to feel to receive the gift of eternal life. First, when we pay our tithes to the church, our Heavenly Father pours out blessings upon us. Anyone who has consistently paid a full tithe knows that it's true. The blessings are sometimes spiritual, sometimes temporal, and they are given in the Lord's time and according to what he knows is best for us. As those blessings come, our faith is increased that God is the source of everything that is good in our lives. It becomes easier to see that consecration simply recognizes the truth that all of, the, all of God's creations are his. It makes us feel gratitude that he asks only 10% of what he has already given us. So we are better prepared to live the law of consecration when it will be asked of us. Second, all of us who have paid a consistent full tithe feel greater confidence in asking God for what we and our families need. He has promised blessings even greater than we can receive. When we have been faithful to our covenants to pay our tithes. So one of the greatest blessings of tithing is confidence in what the future holds. Whatever our circumstances may be, things will work out for the best. As we keep our promises, he will keep his. A feeling of peace is one of great blessings of paying a full tithe. Those who have kept the commandments of tithing can testify that the blessings of peace is real and precious. Third, those who pay tithing feel an increase in their love of God and of all God's children. That increase of love comes from understanding how the Father uses the tithes we offer to bless people in this world and for eternity. So how is tithing spent? The Lord has directed by revelation that the expenditure of his tithes will be directed by his servants. So we turn to Doctrine and Covenants section 120, verse 1. Verily, thus saith the Lord, the time is now come that it shall be disposed of by a council composed of the first presidency of my church and of the bishop and his council and by my high council and by my own voice unto them, saith the Lord, even so, amen. Church members give their tithing donations to local leaders. These local leaders transmit tithing funds directly to the headquarters of the church, where a council determines specific ways to use the sacred funds. This council is comprised of the First Presidency, the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, and the presiding bishopric. Acting according to revelation, they make decisions as they are directed by the Lord. Tithing funds are always used for the Lord's purposes. To build and maintain temples and meeting houses, to sustain missionary work, to educate church members, and to carry on the work of the Lord throughout the world. So Malachi chapter 3 verses 10 and 11. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, mine house. And provide me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out, pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vines cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. I like this explanation in a quote from Elder Bednar. The, imagine, the imagery of the window of heaven used by Malachi is most intuitive. Windows allow natural light to enter into a building. In like manner, spiritual illumination and perspective are poured out through the window of heaven and into our lives as we honor the law of tithing. For example, a subtle but significant blessing we receive is the spiritual gift of gratitude that enables our appreciation for what we have to constrain desires for what we want. A grateful person is, a, is rich in contentment 
an ungrateful person suffers in the poverty of endless discontentment. Strickland Warriors in the Book of Mormon prayed earnestly that God would strengthen and deliver them out of the hands of their enemies. Interestingly, the answers to these prayers did not produce additional weapons or an increased number of troops. Instead, God granted these faithful warriors assurance that he would deliver them, peace to their souls, and great faith and hope for their deliverance in him. Thus, the sons of Helaman did take courage, were fixed with a determination to conquer, and did go forth with all their might against the Lamanites. Assurance, peace, faith, and hope initially might not seem like the blessings warriors in battle might want, but they were precisely the blessings these valiant young men needed to press forward and prevail physically and spiritually. Sometimes we may ask God for success and he gives us physical and mental stamina. We might plead for prosperity and we receive enlarged perspective and increased patience. Or we petition for growth and are blessed with the gift of grace. He may bestow upon us conviction and confidence as we strive to achieve worthy goals. And when we plead for relief from physical, mental, and spiritual difficulties, he may increase our resolve and resilience. I promised that as you and I observe the laws of tithing, indeed the windows of heaven will be opened and, spiritually and temp spiritual and temporal blessings will be poured out such as there shall not be enough room to receive them. We also will remember the Lord's declaration. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. I testify that we are spirit spiritually attentive and observant, I testify that as we are spiritually attentive and observant, we will be blessed with the eyes that see more clearly, ears that hear more consistently, and hearts that understand more fully the significance and subtlety of his ways, his thoughts, and his blessings in our lives. I would like to leave you with my personal testimony that Keeping the Lord's, keeping the commandments of the Lord's will result in peace in, in our souls and joy in our lives. In this time filled with trials and uncertainty, while the whole world is distressed and unsure, we can have the knowledge that we have been promised that all will be well. By keeping the commandments, we have the promise of our, heaven, our Father in heaven that all will be well for us. When we have the faith to give the Lord his tithe, he will keep his promise to see that we have all we need and that everything will be right. I leave these thoughts with you in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.